Robert, the fixed income market, we're seeing uh, Treasury yields on those three-month bills surging to 10-year highs. What's driving yields on uh, the fixed income market to such levels? Good morning, Samantha. Thank you for having me on. Well, it's really interesting that um, the 91-day bill is now at, should be 13.1%, uh, which is actually way above what it was the same time last year. And uh, what may be driving this, I think, is more a factor of um, how much the government needs for it to meet the budget deficit. Right now, there's a lot of um, finance seeking by the government. We also have the 12-year uh, infrastructure bond, which the government seeks to raise uh, 20 billion. So I think uh, right now it's more a question of balancing the scale between maybe government spending and maybe the budget deficit and what has to be done about that. Let's move on to the equity market uh, where there were very few bright sparks uh, when it comes to stocks and their closing prices. But Nation Media Group really seemed to dominate trade yesterday. It managed to collect one shilling, close at 140 shillings. But still, if you put this into context, it was trading above 180 in June. So it has fallen around 40 shillings. What's the, uh, the prospect for the media sector as a whole in light of the slowdown in the economy? I think the prospects have always been the best for the media sector because unlike most of uh, the other sectors which are heavily dependent or maybe you'd say directly dependent on how the economy is doing, the media sector seems to find its way out of, uh, of the quagmire. We have a lot of um, advertising underway. We have a lot of companies looking for branding solutions. And as we move towards the elections next year, we'll also have quite a number of uh, individuals and institutions engaging the media in, in quite a number of campaigns. So I think uh, in the long term, even in the near term, I could look at the media sector as being a very bullish one. So we've got election spend on the one hand, which is expected to, to help the media companies. But on the other hand, surely companies would be cutting back on marketing spend at a time of uncertainty. Yes, that, that's true. But uh, then again, you have, the, you have to look at the kind of business these people do. The, you cannot actually compare them to the manufacturing sector, for instance. They do not have the same kind of balance sheet. They do not rely so much on uh, imports. Maybe you can say the operating expenses are different. So looking at that, I don't see it being a major obstacle in, uh, in their financial position. Now, a worrying, uh, worrying piece of news is that the real estate sector appears to be slowing down, and that was uh, one of the bright sparks in the economy where we expected a boom there. As cement makers are, are saying that cement production has decreased, they see cement uh, demand declining further in light of the weakening shilling as we see it trading above 102 this morning. Uh, where do you park your money with all these concerns? As you say, media sector is one place. Where else do you put your money? Because many investors were bullish on investing in ex uh, companies exposed to the real estate sector at first. Well, I would, for now, I would shift my money into away from production and maybe put it into the financial sector because that's where you have uh, real room for growth and uh, that's where you have the multiplier effect. I would look at the commercial banks and I would look at the, the insurance companies, the investment companies. These companies offer individuals like you and I opportunities which we cannot get. And uh, maybe I would mention companies like Centum Investments, I would mention British American. And uh, that's where I think we, one would be safest right now in such a market. You say that, but Centum is showing that it's uh, increasing its exposure to the real estate sector. So, you know, how, how do you, what do you take that news in light of the fact that we've got a slowdown now in the real estate? Well, they are doing that, but I think they're taking positions for the long term. And uh, other than that, we must remember that they're not solely into the real estate sector. We have them in the equity sector and we have them in private company ownership. So I think they have to weigh out their, their business and I think they're really doing well. And uh, I think real estate, as much as it may be at a low, I think it's something which is more of a phase than something to pull on for more than maybe three months. 
Let's move on to the telecom sector because you has come out saying that they are charging a flat rate now of two shillings uh, a call and that would be the cheapest rate in the telecom sector. This comes at a time when Safaricom has indicated they want to increase uh, voice rates due to high costs. What does this mean for uh, Safaricom going forward who's battling higher costs on the one hand but you know can't bring down their rates as competitors like you are you know setting the stage for more tariff wars? Mm, I think, well, if it's two shillings, I don't know if that will be in the, within their network or it's across network. If it is across the network, then indeed they're the cheapest. But I, if I recall correctly, Airtel was actually a shilling. But that, never, never mind that. I think the important thing here is um, there's been a sector which has been overregulated. We've had a lot of uh, muscle put in by the CCK. And uh, I think the dominant player at the end of the day will suffer most. And here the dominant player is Safaricom. They still have to come out and give us something so, to, to stick by, something, some more innovation. They have to convince um, their large clientele base that there is something more to draw from them. And of course, they, they do also have 90% of the data market, which is, which is the area where you know, you've got much stronger margins, of course, than the voice market. Yes, but again, that is not for long because uh, we, we, we must remember a number of their competitors have acquired the 3G license. And I must say I've acquired it at a much uh, cheaper rate than they did uh, when, they, when they acquired it. So I think it's more of uh, a cash cow that may not last. They may have to bank on it and maximize on it right now. But the, the data, I think, is the new frontier and uh, it's not uh, unique to Safaricom. Uh, very quickly, your, your take on the stock at 3.20. Uh, we, it ha we have seen some profit taking there from last week. Uh, would you be getting into it at this point or waiting for more of a retreat, which we have seen some selling pressure for the majority of September? Well, I would say buy and buy. Keep buying consistently, especially looking at uh, some counters which are really discounted. I would pick Barclays Bank trading at a trailing PE of 6 Point one against a sector PE of about eight. And I would maybe pick some of the other energy counters like Kenjen, which are yet to publish their financial results. Again, uh, ha has a very attractive earnings multiple along with the likes of Kennel Cobell. So I think the strategy now would be maybe keep buying and accumulate your portfolio, both for the medium and long term.